I'm, I'm so excited. And my niece, I begged her to come up here and read a poem. I begged her. So she's back there with her boyfriend, all ensconced in love. This is called Watch How You Use the Word Ghetto. Watch how you use the word ghetto. It's, it's Tony in the house. Remember Tony had this poem on black folk being late? She's not here. Anyway, Tony, that poem always bothered me. Um, teach. It always bothered me because I said, how can you say black folk are late when if you want to say lateness, if you want a, a prototype of lateness, if you really want to hear what lateness is, then you go back to the Civil Rights Bill of 1866 introduced by Lyman Trumbull. That's lateness because even though it was introduced, 1964 was when it was what? Passed and had some teeth in it. And we're still trying to put more teeth in it. We're talking about 1866 the 1964, that's a long time. So when we think of lateness, I think of sometimes the wills of justice being late, not black folk. I'll be rich if you gave me one dollar every time I heard the word ghetto as if it was the only adjective you could find. It's racially charged, just as explosive, explosive as Trump. I hope by the end of my poem, this word, you'll dump. That's so ghetto if you see guys sag their pants. Or if girls keep having babies without wedding the romance. A lot of good came out of the ghetto. Our president once lived in an Indonesian one, you know. And General Colin Powell, first black secretary of state, came out of a Harlem ghetto. A good president some thought he would make. And black Secretary of State, correct me if I'm wrong, Condoleezza Rice came out of the one in Birmingham. And through negotiations, she got Bush out of a number of jams. So when you choose to describe something as ghetto next time, try using the word gauche, smooth, going down like vintage wine. End of